I'm filming this video on the 1st of April, which means that the first quarter of 2023 is officially over, which is kind of crazy, but it's also the reason why I'm making this video today, because I thought it would be a good idea to share a little progress update with you. So yeah, pretty much in this video, I will talk about the three languages that I have been focusing more or less in the first quarter of 2023. I will talk about how much time I spent on each language, which resources I used and which activities I did. And I also think it's important to reflect a little bit on what I was able to do and some difficulties that I've had along the way. But before we begin, a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, italki, which is an online language learning platform where you can have one-on-one -on -one customized language lessons with high quality native speaking teachers. So my favorite thing about italki is that they have over 150 languages, which includes rare languages, sign languages, and even constructed languages like Esperanto. There's also no commitment or subscription fees. You pay per each lesson, although you can save by I get in the package, which is what I like doing. Also, lesson prices on italki start as low as $5. With a huge number of teachers to choose from, you can find the one that suits you best based on your budget and requirements. On italki, there are both professional teachers who will explain things like grammar or vocabulary, or maybe even help you with exam preparation, and community tutors who can help you practice speaking and learn more about the culture. Each teacher has a personal page with information about their experiences, their teaching style, prices, and available hours to help you choose the right teacher for you. I am currently taking Greek classes on italki, which I will talk about a little bit later in the video, but if you want to book your first lesson on italki, use my link and code Tanya to get $5 off your first $10 purchase. But hurry up because the discount will only be available to the first 50 users. You will find more information in the description. And now let's go back to my Q1 progress report. First, let's see what I have for Greek. So just a little reminder of where I was at the beginning of the year, basically at zero. I started doing some Duolingo and then I also took a couple of italki classes back in September of 2022. And then I decided to start learning Polish and I kind of just um, forgot about Greek for a couple of months. This year in January, I decided to slowly start building a foundation so that when I get my Italian to a level that I'm satisfied with, I can start focusing on Greek. Let me show you what exactly I have been doing. And for that, I have my little spreadsheet. So the main activity that I have been focusing on is Duolingo. And I have spent almost 13 hours just on Duolingo this year for Greek, which is not really surprising because as I told you, I decided that while I'm just trying to slowly build the foundation in Greek, Duolingo was going to be my main tool. I've also tried Close Master for the same purpose, but it didn't work as well, even though I do love Close Master and it's one of my favorite language learning apps. I think it's best to use it either with a language that you've already somewhat familiar with, so maybe you have at least A2 in that language, or if it's a language that is very similar to a language that you already speak. I've also spent a little bit over six hours on italki and italki related activities, which is basically homework. When I just started learning Greek last year, I went on italki and I found a teacher, I had one class with her and I really really liked her, so I booked five more. But I only did two out of those five classes before I switched to Polish. So sometime around February, italki started emailing me, telling me that I had those three classes and that if I didn't take them, they would expire. So I scheduled all of those classes for March. So that means I had three 45 minute classes and I also spent four hours on doing homework. I feel like my teacher gives me quite a lot of homework, which I personally really appreciate. I know there are people who don't really like homework, but I feel like it helps me solidify whatever I learned during the class and then feel much more confident during our next class. 
after I started taking classes again, I kind of got the motivation to continue and to do more things for my Greek than just five minutes a day on Duolingo. And I decided to finally give a try to the language transfer Greek course. And I was really skeptical at first because I don't really like audio courses, to be completely honest. They have never really worked for me, but I was so impressed because after the first 30 minutes of listening to the course, I was able to start making sentences like I want him to wait for me there, which honestly was kind of shocking. I really, really do like the course and even though I stopped being consistent with it after a week or so, I am planning to go back, potentially review what I have learned and then continue the course until I finish it. And the last thing that I did, which I only spent 30 minutes on, is Link. I've been really enjoying using it for Italian, which I will talk about later. But for Greek, I think my Greek is just not there yet. So there's not a lot of things that I can read. I started doing their mini stories, I think that's what they're called, which is probably what I spent those 28 minutes on. And I like it. I'm gonna try to do it more now that I am having classes, now that I'm doing some other things like that language transfer course. So potentially I'm hoping that within the next month or so I will start getting more use out of Link. Now let's briefly discuss my progress and some difficulties that I've encountered. So when it comes to progress, to be completely honest with you, I didn't really think I would be focusing on Greek in 2023. So whatever it is that I'm able to do or to achieve now, I'm really, really excited about. I think I'm much more confident with the alphabet, which was my number one goal. I also can now make sentences. As I said, because of language transfer, I can make even somewhat complex sentences, which is really, really exciting. I am absolutely in love with Greek and so all of those little wins definitely give me motivation to continue learning it. But when it comes to difficulties, I would say that the main one has been finding resources for Greek. Taking, let's say, one class a week is just not a fast enough pace for me, but that's what I can afford at the moment, right? So I'm doing that, but I also would like to do some other things on the side. So I started looking for books and I ended up purchasing the Teach Yourself Complete Greek textbook. And if you follow me on Twitter, you could see the whole story unfold because I was super excited. I ordered the textbook. I couldn't wait for it. Then it came and I was like, mm, I'm not sure how I feel about it. And then I decided to send the book back because I looked through it and it was just not what I expected at all. It was very, very heavily based on tourism. There was a chapter on how to order drinks. There was a chapter on how to book reservations at a hotel. I never learned languages for the sake of tourism. And I knew that if I were to continue studying with that book, I would have started hating myself, hating Greek, everything. But what happened yesterday is that I decided to cave in and bought the same textbook that my teacher uses. And so I think I'm going to be using that one just to do more stuff on my own. And if I like it, I'll potentially get their other textbooks for higher levels. So I guess when it comes to my plans for the second quarter, I would like to spend a little more time on Greek to be a little bit more serious about it than I was in the first quarter of the year and to actually stick to using the textbook that I got. So Italian was my number one priority starting December of 2022. And I am somewhat surprised that I've been able to keep it a priority for as long as four months because I tend to switch between my focus languages all the time. But because I was focusing more on Italian, I have a lot more statistics to talk about. Let's look at the activities that I spent most of the time on. So almost 35% of my time, which is 47 hours and 44 minutes, went to listening. If you saw my language learning routine video, there you can kind of see how much time during the day I spend listening to podcasts, to YouTube videos, and things like that. So it's not really surprising to me. Um, the second biggest category is active study, which by active study I usually mean things like studying with a textbook, taking classes, learning vocabulary, learning grammar, and things like that. So in the first quarter of the year, I spent 43 hours and 43 minutes on active studying. 
And then the third biggest category is reading, which I spent almost uh, 42 hours on. Now let's take a closer look at the categories. Let's start with the biggest one, which was listening. So I spent over 28 hours listening to podcasts, which is not at all surprising. So somewhere in the beginning of the year, I decided that I was going to make listening to podcasts a little language project of mine. And I wanted to listen to 50 episodes of whatever podcast I find and want to listen to in Italian. I think since then I have surpassed this number. I stopped counting at 39 and it was a while ago. So I'm probably somewhere in like 60s, 70s now. But it doesn't really matter. What matters is that I think I did manage to improve my comprehension a lot when it comes to listening. And I've also developed an even bigger appreciation for podcasts, including language learning podcasts. The second biggest category is YouTube, which I've spent 11 hours on. And I think the majority of the stuff that I watched were either videos from the Podcast Italiano YouTube channel or videos from these two channels that I'm going to put here. Those those two channels, I would say, are still really challenging for me, but um, I'm getting there. I also spent a little under nine hours watching shows. I only watched two, one of which is actually a Spanish show that I watched with Italian dubbing. I also spent two and a half hours on Lingo Pie, which I think I've watched a couple of shows there, but they had really short episodes. But my favorite thing was probably not even the shows, but a podcast that I found on Lingopi, which I'm going to leave the name here. So when it comes to reading, the way I usually like to proceed is to first start with graded readers. Then sometimes I read children's books. I'm usually not the biggest fan, but this time with Italian, I went to a local library here and they had some books and I just couldn't resist borrowing a couple. So I ended up reading three children's books this year. And then I just started reading a lot of articles in Italian. When it comes to Link, I really, really like using it for Italian because I'm actually able to read a lot of things like articles and even books at this point, but there's still a lot of words that I don't know and so in that sense, Link is really, really helpful. So I spent almost four hours reading articles before I started using Link, and then I spent 16 more hours on articles and books, because actually last week I started reading my first novel in Italian, and I'm also doing it on Link. Another category here that I somehow skipped is graded readers. I found a couple of really good graded readers that were completely free. So if you want, I'll link those in the description. And then um, another category that I have is lyrics. Music basically is the number one reason why I even started learning Italian back in like 2020, I want to say. And so what I started doing relatively recently in like February, I think, is just um, keeping a little notebook with lyrics of the songs that I like. And then I basically intensively read them, which means that I look up every single word. I try to translate every single line. I also write down all of the grammar structures that I'm not familiar with. I write down examples of using vocabulary that I find in that song. So that's what I've been doing. And I've spent six hours on it so far. And then the last category is the most problematic one for me. And it is active study. I started the year using Duolingo just because I had a premium subscription. But then I realized that it was extremely boring because I think my... Italian is a little more advanced for that, so Duolingo feels really really repetitive and boring. So because of that I stopped using Duolingo and I started using it for Greek. And then another thing that I tried was just getting a textbook, but I don't really know why. It's been so hard for me. I usually really like using a textbook as this sort of a guide that tells you when and what you should be learning, especially in terms of grammar. But whatever textbooks I've tried using, I'm not really satisfied with any of those. If anything, I was getting really frustrated every time I would sit down and try to use one of the books that were available to me. And I think that kind of pushed me again more towards consuming more content and just doing more comprehensible input but at this point again I feel very uncomfortable with this huge gap that I have 
between my comprehension and language production skills so i feel like something needs to be done about it and this is probably what i'm going to be working on in the next quarter and another thing that i was doing a lot i spent 25 hours on close master which i always say that close master is one of my favorite apps and um yeah the numbers kind of speak for themselves but what happened is that at some point i had to stop because i was learning a lot of new vocabulary with close master but again at this point i know a ton of vocabulary probably over 10,000 words but i cannot really make a basic sentence without making mistakes so i stopped doing close master because i thought that the 30 to 40 minutes that i spent on close master should be instead spent on learning grammar but i was never able to consistently start studying grammar and so at this point there's no close master but i also haven't really progressed when it comes to grammar okay so those were stats now let's talk about my progress and some difficulties so i kind of started talking about difficulties already saying that i'm not really satisfied with my knowledge of grammar or lack of that knowledge to be more precise and then another problem that i had was that back in march like in the beginning of march i started feeling really tired not really motivated and kind of just unproductive in general in all spheres of my life not just when it comes to language learning so i think march is where this kind of a slump started for me with italian and i was thinking of two ways out of this slump the first one would be to start taking classes and to start finally speaking the language or trying to speak it and then the second one would be reading an actual novel for adults not a graded reader not a children's book an actual novel and i think i've already mentioned that i am reading a book i'm gonna put the title here so you at this point already know which one of the two i've chosen so yeah i'm currently reading my first book in italian and i'm hoping that this for me will be the way out of the slump so when it comes to progress I do feel like my comprehension has improved a lot, both uh, in terms of listening and also in terms of reading, because the book that I'm reading now, which is still not easy for me, and I have to look up a lot of words, thankfully Link makes it easy, but I actually tried reading that same book and I skimmed through the first page and I was like, no, this is not for me yet, as much as I would love to start reading books. I don't feel like it's time yet and now it is time and now i'm actually doing it so that makes me really happy and the final language we're going to talk about is spanish so my spanish is somewhere between b2 and c1 i feel like it's closer to c1 on a good day at least which is partially why my main goal with spanish is to just maintain it by consuming content in spanish and if we look at the stats i spent 39 hours 47 minutes on spanish in the first three months of 2023 and immediately you can tell that 33 out of those 39 hours I spent listening to audiobooks. Again, I've mentioned it in my language learning routine video. Whenever I walk one of the dogs we have at home, I always listen to audiobooks in Spanish. Always is not the right word because I actually stopped doing it in March. In the month of March, I would mostly listen to the language transfer course for Greek. But before that, I did manage to finish several audiobooks and I'm going to put all of them somewhere on the screen here. And uh, here I was reading Los Detectives Salvajes and I spent one hour 51 minutes on it, which is not really the full picture because this book, I was both listening to it as an audiobook and I was reading it on my Kindle. So I spent almost two hours reading it on my Kindle, but but in these 33 hours, like actually a lot of it went to Los Detectives Salvajes, which I still haven't finished. And then another two things is YouTube, which I spent a little bit over four hours on. I think it was mostly one YouTuber that I found that I really liked. I talked about her in uh, my video with Spanish media recommendations that I just recently published. And then for podcasts, I don't really think I have tracked all of the podcasts that I listened to, but it wasn't really that many. I think the time that you see here, 27 minutes, is just one episode. And I think I've listened to like at least two or three episodes 
of different podcasts that had Rosa Montero as a guest. She's a Spanish journalist and author, and I just listened to one podcast where she was a guest, and then I just started looking her up on my podcast app, which I use Google Podcasts, by the way, and just listening to whatever I could find with her. One thing that I'm really proud of that I did this quarter for Spanish is releasing the two videos that I made on how I learned Spanish. The first video is basically all of the resources that I used for more sort of formal studying of Spanish. And then the second video is just all of the media, be it music, podcasts, shows, books. But when it comes to difficulties, I always wish I could spend more time on my Spanish just because there's just so many podcasts, there's so many books, videos that I want to watch, listen to, or read. And with all the other languages that I'm studying, I don't always have time for all those resources, which is a shame, but I guess that's kind of the trade-off when you are learning so many languages. My dog at this point has woken up and she's trying to chew on the tripod. So I'm gonna have to finish this video right now, but I really am curious to hear how your first quarter of 2023 went. What languages were you focusing on, if any? What are your plans for the second quarter of the year? And yeah. Just anything you want to share when it comes to your language learning journey. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye bye!